Welcome back to Kivumbi 2017. In studio with me, Ethiopian Ambassador to Kenya, Ambassador Dina Mufti. And Ambassador, before we took the break, we're delving into matters um, economy. And one of the biggest uh, corruption, I mean, biggest election issues um, in this, uh, this year has been corruption, something that uh, Kenya has dealt with for quite a while now. Ethiopia seems to have successfully dealt with the corruption menace. What lessons can Kenya draw from Ethiopia? Well, as you know, any society cannot be corruption-free. Uh, there is a level of corruption in any society. Mm -hmm. This is not to excuse the presence of corruption in, in a society. It's not to let it go. There should be an effort to, to curb corruption at all levels. We have some experiences uh, that perhaps we may share uh, with other countries uh, by way of um, averting corruption. But still, we have, we have problems of corruption. There are some levels of corruption. As we speak, only this week, uh, we have brought about 42 officials from the government to the court because of the corruption. They are standing in the court, and the number is quite continued. Okay. About 42 mid-level and higher officials. That means still we have the problems uh, of corruption to, to confront and to fight it. Uh, one of the lessons is actually uh, that we may share is to empower local communities so as to uh, support the government in fighting corruption. Uh -huh. It cannot be, the government cannot alone fight the corruption. It can have some institutions that perhaps would uh, follow it, would uh, perhaps uh, fight corruption, but the people, uh, the, the, the people at the grassroots level should be empowered, uh -huh. and the people should actually, you know, should watch and should inform and follow and bring the, this corrupt uh, people who, 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 who are involved in corruption to book. Uh, you know, it's still, as I have already said, in, in the case of fighting Al Shabaab and the other terrorist groups as well, empowering the local communities is what the problem here. That may not solve the entire problems, but it can help somehow to fight corruption. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if you know, corruption is actually a menace. It is. Uh, it hampers the development. It hampers the prosperity. At times, it, it can pr bring social chaos as well. Uh, therefore, uh, empowering the people, empowering the local people, people at the grassroots level, somehow will help. Yes. Yes. Because in Kenya, corruption um, almost always goes hand in hand uh, with the ugly head of tribalism, which seems to always again rear its head uh, during the elections. Um, considering Kenya-Ethiopia relations um, spin back to quite, uh, you know, um, some time back, how would you describe the current situation in the country with regard to tribalism? Well, tribal feelings, tribal sentiments, and uh, tribalism somehow also cannot see them in society. In our society, we see also elements of tribalism as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think by accentuating the level of equality among tribes, uh, you can decrease the sentiment. And uh, focusing on things that creates commonality among various tribes could help as well. In our country, we do have a federal uh, type of government, uh, which means we have federal nine regional federal states. Mm -hmm and there is uh, devolution. We have devolved power to the level of the uh, regions and uh, that somehow reduced tensions at the center. And uh, empowering tribes, uh, creating lev play level field for all of them to mm -hmm. play. So inclusivity. Inclusivity. Uh, could help uh, to fight tribalism as well. All right. Um, so let's delve into matters, uh, trade and uh, economy, especially the bilateral relations between Kenya and Ethiopia. Previously, the relations had been described as unilateral, with Ethiopia mostly importing from Kenya and Kenya mostly exporting to Ethiopia. Has that changed since? Well, as you know, intra-African trade is very limited uh, because most of the African countries produce uh, agricultural commodities. Mm -hmm. uh, this holds true for Ethiopia-Kenya trade relationship as well. There are, you know, the, the border regions, there is a huge volume of trade among people living in the border areas, mm -hmm. which we can't even count for. Otherwise, uh, we do have what we call uh, joint ministerial commissions, which we hold once or twice every year, mm -hmm. and uh, where they discuss 
it's about trade relationships, business relationship, and in that case also, there is a trade relationship somehow there. It's not as big as we wish, but it's uh, a trade relationship that is growing. Right, and of course, the, laps the Lapset project uh, that is uh, currently ongoing is set to further open up uh, trade ties between Kenya and Ethiopia. Yes. What is the potential uh, that is uh, lying in that particular project? The potential is very huge. Ethiopia is a country of 100 million people. There is a big market there. Uh, there is a huge opportunity for Kenyans to invest in Ethiopia. Uh -huh. uh, there is a huge op opportunity also for conducting trade with Ethiopia because we do have a huge number of consumers, as, as I've said, in a country of 100 million people. So the potential for boosting trade is huge and that is great. All right. Um, and, and, you know, before we wind up, uh, Ambassador, there's been questions, of course, as to this very deep, unique relationship between Kenya and Ethiopia. Maybe just giving us the specifics as we wind up as to what the pacts were between Mzee Jomo Kenyatta back then and the late Emperor um, Selassie. They had quite, um, you know, a close relationship and several pacts back then that led to these close ties between Kenya and Ethiopia. It's very unique in the sense that the two leadership was quite close. They had excellent chemistry. The, one of the small witnesses to this is that our, uh, the embassy, Ethiopian embassy, is a few, few kilo, kilometers away from the state house. Uh -huh. It's just like we feel we're uh, living in the state house now. Uh, and the, the two personalities uh, let President Jomo Kenyatta and uh, late Emperor Haislasi, they have had excellent relationship. And uh, they were talking like brothers. And uh, when the embassy was opened, it was not considered as an embassy of foreign country, but as a, as a guest house of some many, a closer brother. So the relationship is uh, excellent. And that, by the way, uh, I said Ethiopian Kenya relationship is unique in the sense that the only country who didn't have any tangible problems with each other in this region, in this turbulent region, is, are the these two countries. There have never been any noted trouble between these two countries for over the last 50 years. <laughs> this means the relationship is unique, and that is why we call it a special status relationship. That's why we, why we call it a strategic relationship. All right. All right. So with this five days to the election, Ambassador, um, what would you tell Kenyans as they head to the polls, especially as we come back from uh, the experience of the 2007-2008 post-election violence and we're in an era where fears continue to rise ahead of this election? I highly trust the wisdom of the Kenyans. We value the wisdom of the Kenyan people. We think, we believe the biggest price in this is peaceful, stable, and united Kenya. Uh, the outcome of the election, democracy comes next. And therefore, I wish Kenya uh, successful elections and uh, peaceful Kenya. As we united go ahead. Kenya, right. strong Kenya. Thank you very much. Ambassador Dina Mufti is the Ethiopian ambassador to Kenya, speaking to us on matters Ethiopia-Kenya relations that date 